Hello everybody, welcome back to the Creepy Caffeinated Chronicles. It is your favorite host, Mr. Butternubs, and with me as always is... Your other favorite host, Ray. I'm starting to take that personally now. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying our favorite... What am I saying? Your favorite host. I, I, okay. Instead of saying your favorite host. I, I'm about to say your favorite... No, you know, yeah, there's no plural favorite, huh? Favorites? Favorites? Hosts. Your, hosts. your favorite hosts. Yeah. There you go. Your favorite hosts! <laughs> Mr. Butternubs and Ray... This is just our usual um, one-off episodes where we just... What? <laughs> what? I'm just very weird right now because I'm sleep-deprived. I've been awake for almost 24 hours. I mean, if anything, we could have taken... You could have taken, like, a nap and then we could have just recorded when you got up. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this is just one of our off episodes where we just relax, we... Read some mm-hmm. stories off of Reddit or wherever we found creepy things. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So how's, uh, how's the week been? It's been great, actually. I, I've i had a great last two days of work. What? Yeah. <laughs> you and your fucking place of work? <laughs> okay. So for the past two weeks, um, they've been placing me... On the same assignment, the first assignment, right? Mm. Usually, I wouldn't mind, but the thing is, is that ever since I've been working at this job since July, they have placed me in the first assignment, and me like a dumbass, I don't speak up. So because I don't speak up, they think that I'm okay with this run. So they constantly give me this run. I've been having this run straight up since like November or December, and it was the first time that they sent me on a different run. Mm. Because somebody requested that run, another coworker, I'm assuming. So when I changed, it was refreshing because it kind of got to the point where, like, I was seeing the same exact people every single day mm. and I was getting annoyed. I was getting annoyed because some of them have their quirks and their habits, you know what I mean? And it would kind of get annoying and everything, like, literally, like, a call I would go off and I would roll my eyes and I don't want to freaking do my job. Like, yeah. it, like, and it shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't be like that because then I feel like there's something wrong with me because I'm not giving the quality of care I'm supposed to give. Mm. And just because I roll my eyes and I'm like, what the heck, doesn't mean that yeah, I like, treat them every any different or like I abuse them or neglect them. No. I'm just low-key a little moody <laughs> when I go in there. But they can't tell. Yeah. You know, because I haven't gotten any any complaints from my job. But um, but anyways, so Fuck that, that. happened. I'm going to call in and be like, hey, you know this fucking employee? <laughs> Please do Buy their... No. <laughs> Please don't, man. They, uh, my job, every every single little thing knock shift does, morning shift complains about it. Oh, they accidentally left three water pitchers in the break room. We get a text message. You guys left the water pitchers in the break room. Do better. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just a water pitcher. But I also put it like, away yourself. I feel like that's like any job that has like a night shift and a day shift. Like when they used to do day shift for Amazon. We were, we would always just shit on fucking day sh- uh, night shift, like they don't do shit, they don't fucking do anything, like it really, they leave every, the whole area a mess. Now I'm in night shift. Yeah, it's true, <laughs> but then day shift also does this, like the same shit to us, because we're all, like fucking day shift, lazy, they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. It's like it's just a stupid vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny too because we get pissed at PM shift. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure PM shift gets pissed off of AM shift. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, no, but with good reason because PM shift is pretty stupid. Yeah, it got to the point where it wasn't even. It was about to be one o'clock, and um, my coworker had found four patients that were soaking wet, like to the point where there was rings on the pee pad. Oh man! Which is neglect. Yeah, it's abuse, straight up abuse. And that's not okay. And that should be reported right away. And they do report it, but I don't know what's going on at my job. So it kind of got to the point where one of the nurses for PM shift, she was covering for our knock shift nurse. So she decided to do a double. So she was working PM shift and knock shift. So she was working these double hours and everything. And she already had the backside. So she's all like, okay, so now I know what the issue is with this CNA. Hmm. So she's like, so now every time he comes to work, before he leaves, I have to hold his hand and look through every single room to make sure that all his patients are clean. I was like, I understand that, but it shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. Because this is a grown man. 
he needs to do his job. If it's too much, ask for help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, look, if it's too much, ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help and everything. Like, come on. But no. So, it's just been a whole ordeal. But anyways, so the past two weeks, I've been, they've been switching me back and forth. Um, and like in the back or whatever. And I've been liking it. I've been vibing with it. Like sometimes it's a little bit rougher than other days. But I mean, it's a breath of fresh air because I don't have to deal with everybody in the front. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they started throwing me in the front again. And I was like, okay, that's fine. It's cool. It's been a while. I kind of missed them a little bit. And then they had me there for two straight weeks. Yikes. And then I was all like, wait a minute. Okay. Because I had, because usually they never plan the daily schedules ahead, mm -hmm. but they did this time. So I looked and then I saw, okay, after my two days off, I'm going to have these two people. I mean, these two, these two assignments, like basically the first and the second day. So I straight up told one of, not my boss because she wasn't there yet, but the scheduler. I was like, hey, I was all like, I've been having the front assignment for the past two weeks. I want you to switch it. I was like, if you still want me to have the front assignment, for whatever reason, I can do at least two out of my four days. I don't care. If you want to put me there on my first day and my fourth day, that's fine and change the second and third. That's okay. But I was like, I cannot be having them back to back because then I get tired and I get frustrated because of these people. I was like, and I, I just don't. And I was like, and they deserve the best quality of care that I can give them and I cannot deal with them every single day. Hmm. So she's like, okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll talk to our boss about it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I was low-key stressing out because I had gotten back to work. And for my first and second day, I had the first run. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. So on the third day, I showed up, which I should have checked prior. But I showed up, and I told myself that if they were going to have me in the front, I was going to walk out. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> But no, they had me on the second run, and I said, you know what, fuck it, why not? Even though I've never had this assignment, I'm just like, whatever, it's something new. That's why I, I, I kind of like it being refreshed. Yeah. It gives me anxiety, but it keeps me on my toes. I think that's why I like my job. Sometimes it keeps me on my toes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, like, it was great. And then I had the second run again today, so I kind of knew a little bit more compared to yesterday, and I kind of knew who wanted stuff and who didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, on the bright side, I'm on episode 160 of One Piece. Woo -woo. On the bright side, um, my TikTok has been popping off. Yeah. Go bestie. I've been reposting every single one that I see. It Sometimes is, I search you up just to make sure if I haven't reposted any. It's so funny to like, because there's only one specific one that's like really popping out. It's where that the girl like burnt her hands getting the. Did I see that one? Yeah, yeah, you saw it. Or did, I, did I repost it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm almost done with my cosplay for WonderCon. How how about you, buddy? <laughs> um, I've been pretty good. Yeah, besides the whole TikTok thing, I've been working out more. Like even though I, re I record only like maybe like a minute, three minutes like total, then I cut it down to one minute. But I'm like there for like an hour, hour and a half. And it's, it's good, but now I want to switch gyms, because I can't, since it's like a really small Planet Fitness, there's not a lot, <laughs> to, uh, not, not a lot of equipment, and it's like I'm either stuck on one machine waiting for someone else to move, or you have like those people who leave their equipment on a machine, and then they'll go off to do something else. And then, like, if you get on that machine, they get fucking pissed. And I mean, it's it's terrible gym etiquette, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's those people who are like ego lifters who put on a massive amounts of weights on, mm -hmm. but barely do the actual movement. Mm -hmm. So it's it's disgusting behavior. Mm -hmm. And then I'm noticing that there's people who just like hover, like the gym. Like there's just one guy who just kind of like he walks around. A lot and then like he'll get on one machine do like a little workout and he'll just walk around the gym again maybe security I, I don't that's weird a little bit plus I'm tired I'm tired of seeing like naked guys in the, in the, <laughs> the bathroom 
I feel like that's gonna have that's gonna be every, every gym. Yeah, but with Planet Fitness, it feels like it's more, like it's just old dudes that just let it hang out, and it is gross. Dude, at least wrap the towel around yeah. you. It's uh, disgusting. I don't know. I can't relate because I see that every day. So I'm just like, all right. At least I get paid. Yeah. I'm watching it for free. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> So I'm just gonna like work out there for Planet Fitness for like a little bit longer, and then switch either to 24 or LA Fitness. Uh huh. Is that another Planet Fitness location near you? Mm, no, I don't think so. But I'm kind of just done with Planet Fitness in general. Like, like it's it's all right. Mm-hmm. It's a good gym to. to you right? <laughs> I just like it. You right? <laughs> okay. Like, it's an alright gym to start off with, but I feel like I can't, like, row uh-huh. there. Uh-huh. I get it. Yeah. Plus, you have to be, like, silent with your equipment, too. I don't... It's like, with some... Like, let's say you're in the middle of, like, a movement, right? Mm-hmm. And you're running on fumes. So you have to, like... You're about to drop the weight, basically, because you can't hold it any longer. So if you drop it, you're going to make a lot of sound. And you can't make a lot of sound in Planet Fitness. Because they have something called a lunk alarm. So it's like if you... They basically like point at you and go like, This motherfucker's loud! Or they either kick you out or like cancel your gym membership. What the heck? That's Planet Fitness. So like you have to be like super gentle with your weight. Like I get it! But then it's just like if I'm <laughs> fucking like dying... Like I'm not going to be gentle about the gym equipment. I'm going to drop it so I can... Get out the way, or so you won't hurt yourself. Yeah, it's it's dumb. Yeah, there's a lot of videos online of like guys going there to deliberately set it off. <sighs> oh, and then I guess I have like two parts. Let's start. I'm debating and doing. I got two stories, right? Mm-hmm. One that I talked about last episode about the ten days and ten dreams. Mm-hmm. And then I actually have the Reddit story. Hell yeah. But if the dream one is long enough, I think I'll just leave it there. Okay. And then just save my Reddit story for another episode. Huzzah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got something to say. All right. So I apologize to the people that wanted to listen to the Elisa Lamb story. Mm-hmm. I totally forgot that today was the Creepy Caffeinated Chronicles. I reminded you the last episode. I told you, you realize that it's going to be. I know. But I forgot. And then I remembered. Because I was listening to the podcast. And I was like, oh yeah. It's the Creepy Caffeinated Chronicles. I know, I, I kept reminding you. And you went, yeah, no, I got it. Michael, I forgot what I ate this morning. What did you eat this morning? I don't know. <laughs> Coffee, I guess. Maybe eggs? Maybe. Who knows? Dude. Okay. So like, so like, yeah, I, I completely forgot, okay? And then plus, I mean, it's easy. I could just easily find a Reddit story, you know? But, but yeah, I completely forgot and everything. So for the, I, the two-parter, I guess you're going to have to wait another week for the Elisa Lamb story. Or you can go on, on HBO. It's a lot of shit there. Dude. You have, oh you my have, God. I started access. watching Alaskan tri- the Alaska Triangle. It's like the Bermuda Triangle, yeah. but Alaska. Mm-hmm. And basically... A lot of the strange phenomena that happens in the Bermuda Triangle, it's been happening a lot in Alaska. So that's why they call it the Alaskan Triangle, because it's all falling within a triangle. Yeah. I mean, you also have access to forensic files, too. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Yes. S- start. I mean, like, you can watch it technically as, like, background noise. Like, let's say if you're just, like, doing that's something. That's what I was doing as I was doing my cosplay. Yeah. That's what I was doing. But, like, you also get really sucked into it, too. Yeah. It's a lot of interesting stories and... Mm-hmm. It's really sad, but damn, is it interesting. But the thing, oh my god, the thing that I really, really, like, I'm really, really interested in Alaska, too, just because of how eerie it is, dude. Alaska is the state that has the least amount of people in the whole U.S., right? The Mm -hmm. whole USA. Mm -hmm. But it has the most disappearances percentage in any state. I guess I could see why. Yeah. A lot of creepy shit goes up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is it? Trafficking, murder, the elements, animals, paranormal, weird phenomena. Mm-hmm. 
Like, which, I mean, it makes sense. But, like, oh, dude, I went down a whole rabbit hole just listening to all of this and I'm everything. so glad I gave you my HBO account. <laughs> So shit's shit's about to get go crazy. So mm. my next story might be on an episode that I really liked. Yeah, I know the there's some there's some true crime mystery I think that Ryan and Shane might have covered, I think. That took place in Alaska, I'm not quite sure. Uh-huh. I had would have to remember. Anyways, who's going first? Should we flip a coin? Alright, fuck it, we ballin'. I'm just telling to the I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just telling to turn it down a notch for me. Okay, the only reason as to why I clicked this one is because of the title. And it's kind of longish. Um, and it's... The title is... It's from r slash no sleep. Classic. Yep. That's mainly the one that we always read. And the title is, I don't believe in ghosts, but that didn't save any of us. Which gave me me vibes. I was like, this is... I feel like this is, this is me. Hmm. This is real. This is me. Okay, let me take a sip before I start. We went to a little anime pop-up, y'all. Yeah, it was supposed to last until 5 o'clock. Good God. Yeah, I just finished. I, I, plan- I timed it, right, huh? Oh, yeah, like, no, it was, it was like, perfect. Let's, let's like, go at 1. No, we got there. We were, there, we were there for an hour. Because I knew it was going to be small. Yeah. I don't know why I thought it was going to be just a little bit bigger. But I guess that's on me. No, I... T- I t- yeah, I didn't tell you guys it was going to be that small. No, I mean, I wasn't expecting, like, a, a convention size, but just, like, like, a, I don't know, like, like longer, Yeah. I guess. I was expecting that. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the same time, this is their first ever event. Yeah. So, I've uh, never, yeah. yeah. They had, yeah, I think some vendors that we've seen before at different cons that we've gone to. Yeah, I um, recognize someone I went to a pop-up in San- Santa Ana. Yeah, Santa Ana. W- one of the, one of the people that... I know for sure that have the like the avatar stickers and everything like the Appa fan. Uh huh. That when we went to when we did the avatar board, mm-hmm. they gave us a free decal. Oh, because that's of cool. it, yeah. They're like, yeah, it's an anime. Here you go. Like here's a here's a fucking little turtle duck decal. I don't agree, but whatever. First off, it is, or if you can consider it, a gateway into anime. It's like saying Teen Titans is an anime. No, that's more cartoon. I don't know how to tell you. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you either. I don't tell you. Agree to disagree. Anime, at least Avatar, I'm going to say, if you can't agree on it, it's a gateway. Yeah. It's a gateway drug. You're right. Because that's how, that's how my cousin uh, got into anime. Mm -hmm. We got him to watch Avatar. And he's like, yo, this shit's good. Is there anything else like this? I'm like, oh, I got, I got a list for you. Mm-hmm. He then proceeded to binge watch Naruto in like two weeks. Damn. Yep. That's like six seasons. He watched it all. Wow. Yep. Well, that's at least for Naruto. I could be totally wrong. Maybe it's ten or twelve. Uh, I'm not sure because I, I really don't know. I don't remember. Please, any Naruto fans, don't kill me. Um, okay, so let's go back to the story. Alright. <clears throat> I don't believe in ghosts, but that didn't save any of us. The engine died with the final shutter, and I snatched the keys from the ignition. The door creaked in protest as it swung open, allowing the muted silence of the village to creep inside the car. As I stepped out, my boots crunched on gravel, the sound absurdly loud in the stillness that blanketed this forgotten place. A chill breeze nipped at my neck, carrying it with the musty scent of decay. Welcome to nowhere, I muttered under my breath, glancing around with the skeptic's eye. The sky above was the color of old bruises, clouds smothering any warmth from the sun. I buttoned up my coat, a futile defense against the creeping cold, and started walking. The village was a graveyard of homes rather than bodies, though. Given the eerie quiet, I wouldn't have been surprised by the latter. Ancient architecture loomed over me, stone uh, facades pitted by time. Windows dark and vacant. Vines clung to walls like desperate fingers, and gardens spilled onto paths, untamed and wild. Whatever charm this place once had was suffocated by neglect. History or horror story, I asked myself, chuckling darkly at the thought. 
but my laughter was short-lived, dying on my lips as I passed beneath the shadow of what must have been the church. It steeped, pierced the sky, a silent sen- sentinel? Sen- sentinel? Sen- that. Keeping watch over its domain of rotting wood and peeling paint. I could imagine them, the villagers, yesteryear, walking these very streets. Lives as intertwined as the ivy strangling the lampposts. Were they, were they watching me now? Whispering from hollows in the walls. Shaking my head to rid myself of the thought, I pressed onward. My camera hung heavy around my neck. Its presence a reminder of why I was here. To peel back the layers of myth, to expose the bones of truth beneath. Let's see if you're worth the trouble, I said to the village, not expecting an answer, and none came. I walked on boots, scuffing against the cobblestone, the weight of unseen eyes following my every move. A chill slithered down my spine as I rounded a bend, the cobblestones giving way to a clearing that buzzed with an energy that was anything but welcoming. A circle of villagers stood behind me, their bodies swaying in unison. Faces obscured by grotesque paintings that seemed to twist and writhe in the dying light. The rhythm of their chants... What the, what the fuck is this? Was the word centennial or sentinel? C-A-C-O-P-H-O-N-Y. So it's going to be on the top left. Cacophony. Cacophony, yeah. Cacophony? Yeah, I think so. I can't, I can't read you guys. No, it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay to know to know you that, think that, that you I'm can't gonna... read. And it's crazy because I read all the time. Yeah. Look, I... No one is more embarrassed than me myself because I can read just fine in my head. But the moment I try to read out loud, I'm like a fucking fourth grader. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> yep, exactly. Hey! You're not supposed to agree to that? Well, I agree because I'm the same way. That's oh, okay. That's what I meant. Not that you're stupid. I mean, you're stupid, but I'm stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> We're stupid together. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay, a cacophony of guttural tones played upon the air like a discordant melody. Quaint, I muttered under my breath. The word laced with the with a bitter skepticism. The camera felt suddenly heavy in my hands, its lens a barrier between me and this grime tableau. I raised it, not to capture their likeness, but to create a semblance of distance from the skeptical unfurling before me. As I glanced through the viewfinder, a figure detached itself from the ring of fervent worshippers and approached. She moved with an eerie grace, her steps soundless against the earth, the fading light casting her shadow long and thin upon the ground. The villagers parted for her, their chanting undisturbed by her exit from their ritualistic dance. Anna, she said simply, introducing herself, while the painted symbols on her face caught the twilight in strange angles. You shouldn't be here. Story of my life, I quipped, the camera lowering just enough to meet her gaze. So what's all this about? I gestured vaguely towards the others, still entranced by their own fervor. Her eyes, dark pools reflecting when encroaching, and reflecting the encroaching night, held mine with an intensity that bordered on the unnerving. It is a ritual of appeasement, she began, her voice a stark contrast to the chaos around her, steady and sure. We must honor the watchers, lest they take offense. Watchers, I echoed, the term snagging on the thorn of interest, despite my reluctance. And what happens when these watchers get offended? Bad weather? Poor crops? Much worse, Anna replied, her brow furrowing ever so slightly. You may scoff now, outsider, but ignorance will not protect you from their wrath. Guess I'm playing with fire then, I said, a smirk tugging on the corner of my mouth. Her solemn nod told me she didn't appreciate the humor. Fire, she whispered almost to herself, might be preferable to what awaits those who disturb the watchers. I consider her words the weight of the villagers' collective belief pressing against my chest. It would have been easy to laugh it off, to dismiss the warning as nothing more than superstition. But something in the air, something electric and alive whispered caution. Thanks for the heads up, Anna. I forced casualness into my voice, though the earnest fear in her eyes stirred a disquiet, dis- disquiet deep within me. I'll be, sh- I'll be sure to tread lightly. Be mindful, outsider, she said before turning back to rejoin the ritual. The watchers see all, and they do not forgive easily. As she melted back into the group, the chants 
crescending to a fervor pitch. I couldn't shake the feeling that there were indeed eyes upon me, eyes that saw far more than I was ready to confront. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting the village in an eerie blend of twilight shadows and the dying light. I could feel the shift in my atmosphere, the previous hum of the ritual now on a low murmur, as if the earth itself was holding its breath. Tell me, Anna, I began, my voice steady despite the unease that had snaked its way into my bones. How long have these rituals been part of your tradition? Centuries, she said, her eyes reflecting the fading light. They're woven into the fabric of this place as the old stones and just as immovable. Sounds like a heavy burden for a bedtime story, I replied dryly. Belief is not a story outsider, it's a lifeline. There was a steel edge to her tone that caught me off guard. All right then, enlighten me. What happens if you skip a chapter, decide to take a night off? Anna's gaze didn't waver. You don't want to know. Try me. Before she could answer, the world changed. A gust of wind surged through the village, fierce enough to make the ancient trees bow and descript houses groan in protest. The sky, once a painted canvas of twilight eyes, turned ink black in the blink of an eye. Christ, I murmured, squinting against the sudden chill that cut through my jacket. See, and his voice was barely audible over the wind, they are displeased. Who? The watchers, I scoffed, but the word tasted like ash on my tongue. This is just weather. Is it? Her question was almost lost as the wind howled louder, an anguished cry from the heavens themselves. A collective gasp rose from the villagers as the first of the leaves began to whirl in frenzied pat patterns, as if invisible hands were conducting a symphony of chaos. I watched with a mixture of horror and fascination, unable to tear my eyes away from the spectacle. Anna, what the hell is going on? I demanded, raising my voice to be heard. Anger, she shouted back. Oh, anger! You've seen the ritual. You've heard the warnings. Now you witness the consequence. Of what? <laughs> Some old <laughs> fucking, fucking face you just made on that. You went. <laughs> oh man! It oh, reminds me of that that girl. What's it called? <laughs> that one black girl. She does that. Yeah. No, wait. <laughs> you went. Like, like your face is like. Wait, oh my god, that's so great. Well, can you be descriptive so that the people who are listening know what face I mean? You know those like giga chat memes where, where like they're like sucking in their their bones so, like to expose the bone the uh, cheekbones. Yeah, I like that. Like uh, like like Richard from Amazing World of Gumball when he's like fully ripped and he has that that jawline like that. Oh, this is great. <laughs> fucking mewing over here <laughs> tears are coming out of my eyes <laughs> oh god I can't oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you make that face you just went <laughs> oh god now you've seen the ritual you've heard the warnings now you witnessed the consequence of what some old superstition but even as I spoke, I couldn't shake the sense that something unearthly was unfolding before us. Superstition has claws and teeth here, Anna said, her voice tight with fear. And it doesn't care for your disbelief. I wanted to argue, to laugh in the face of the ridiculous of it all. But the terror etched in the faces around me told a different story. These weren't actors on a stage. This was raw and filtered panic. Inside, get inside, someone yelled, and like startled birds, the villagers scattered, their earlier trace broken by survival instinct. Come on, Anna grabbed my arm, pulling me towards one of the nearby houses. Okay, first of all, if I were Anna, and if I was a religious leader, and some bitch was trying to be like, hey, you're dumb, God isn't real, even though I'm like, whatever, why would I save them? Be like, no, you don't, you know what I mean? Am I going crazy? I, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get. I don't want to get into the topic of religion. I have a lot of thoughts about religion. Okay. Very. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty strong when it comes to my my beliefs. All right. 
Uh, she grabbed her arm, right, pulling me towards one of the nearby houses. As we ran, the wind whipped at my back, a cold reminder that the night had only just begun, and that my si- Girl, what does this mean? I'm so used to them being badly written, this is too good for me to read. That's so much good grammar. I know, right? Might have welcomed the darkness. I was ill-prepared to understand. Dust and debris nipped at my ankles. I'm pretty sure Nicole's going to be so annoyed with me. She's going to text you like, it was this word, that word, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah. Dust and debris nipped at my ankles as I stumbled through the pandemonium. See, I can read that one. The once still night air now roared with urgency, thrashing against the old world architecture of the village like an ageless beast awakened from slumber. Above me, Anna's grip was iron, but even her fear couldn't drown out the cacophony of terror that rang from every corner. Move, Lyle, she hissed through clenched teeth. I was moving, wasn't I? Or was the ground itself revolting beneath my feet? Villagers blurred past in a frenzied motion, their faces, twist- their faces twisted masks of dread. Shadows clawed at the edges of my vision, dark fingers stretching towards their fleeting forms. In that moment... Reason clashed with instinct. Every logical fiber of my being screamed denial, while my gut knew knew this was mer- knew this was no mere panic. A chilling gust cut through the clamor, carrying with it a sound that ground my bones to ice. It was a low moan, a chorus of despair so potent it seemed to bleed from the very soil beneath us. I looked up, squinting against the wind's biting lashes, and I saw them, the watchers. They were shapeless terrors, swirling in the tempest, specters woven from nightmares and whispering winds. Their forms flickered in and out of existence, translucent silhouettes that danced not a grace that bellied their malevolence. A villager not far ahead crumbled to the ground, body writhing as it gripped by unseen hands. I tore my gaze away, only for it to fall upon another. This one suspended midair, a scream frozen on her lips before she too fell limb. Christ, the word escaped, a half prayer, half curse, lost in the storm. Anna yanked me forward. Don't just stand there, damn you. But I couldn't tear my eyes from the horrors (laughs) around me. I did the face again. (laughs) Buildings cracked and groaned, their age stone succumbing to the relentless assault. Gardens had overgrown into wild beauty, were now upturned, their earth scattered as though by the furry giants. My skepticism, that comforting cloak of derision, I'd wrapped myself in so tightly, unraveled thread by thread. They were the watchers, forces dormant no longer, roused in ire by the doubt of an outsider who thought himself above such primitive fears. And here I was, witnessing the result of my arrogance, a village besieged by its own protectors turned tormentors. Run, you fool, Anna's voice was almost lost to me now, her presence a fading certainty as the chaos sought to claim us both. I ran, each step a battle against the disbelief that still clawed at my mind. The world had gone mad, or perhaps it was I who had been blind to its true face all along. Panting, my boots slipped on loose stones as I sought the heart of the village, the place where answers lay hidden beneath layers of dust and superstition. The dim light from the windows of the elders' meeting house beckoned like a lighthouse in the storm of dread. I pushed through the heavy ancient door, its hinges screaming protest that matched the cacophony outside. Help me, a plea ripped from my throat, raw and desperate as I, stum- as I stumbled into the candlelit sanctum. Meredith stood over the table, littered with tattered scrolls and leather-bound tomes, her silver hair casting ga- ghost, casting ghostly shadows on the walls. She looked up, her eyes piercing me with an intensity that suggested she had been expecting my intrusion. Tell me how to stop them, I demanded. My hands braced on the wooden table, scattering parchment. Ah, Lyle, isn't it? Meredith's voice was calm, a sharp contrast to the turmoil that raged within and without. You've already done so much. Cut the cryptic crap, Meredith. Anger flared in me, hot against the chill of fear that had settled in my bones. People are dying out there. Silence is sometimes the loudest plea for help, she murmured, her fingers tracing the arcane symbols on the yellow page. The watchers do not take kindly to disbelief. Then what? We just bow to their whims, let them slaughter us because they didn't play along with the fairy tale? 
Respect is not a fairy tale, Thorn interjected, emerging from the shadows, with the gravity that had seemed to weigh down the very air. It is the thread that holds the fabric of our existence together. You unraveled that thread. Great, so stitch it back up. (laughs) Damn. Okay. My voice broke with frustration. Only the pennant can mend what has been torn, Meredith replied, her gaze unwavering. Before I could argue further, the the door burst open and Thomas barreled in. His breath come in in raged gasps, his usual exposure lost to the night's terror. Lyle, you have to leave now. Thomas grabbed my arm, his grip iron. This is beyond you, beyond any of us, the consequences. Listen to him, boy. Thorne's voice voice boomed, echoing off the stone walls. Leave, I yanked my arm free. I started this. I'm not about to run with my toe between my legs while you all pay the price. Stubborn fool, Thomas spat, but his eyes held something akin to respect. There are fates worse than death, and the Watchers are old vindictive. Then I'll face them, I resolve hardened, like the ancient stones that form the foundation of this cursed place. Tell me what I need to know. Very well, Meredith sighed, finally closing the tome before her. But know this, once you walk this path, there may be no return. Wouldn't be the first time I muttered. My mind was already racing with the possibilities of what lay ahead. It was clear now. Escape was never an option. This was my fight whether I liked it or not. I placed the narrow confines of Thorn's study. Air thick and with the musk of ancient leather and fear. Thomas stood by the fireplace, his hand clenched at the sides, the firelight casting deep shadows across his rugged face. Our eyes met in silence, understanding we were about to dance with devils. All right, I said, my voice a low growl. The text mentioned an offering, something to quell the Watcher's fury. Blood and blown. Blood and bone. I think I say blood and blow. Oh, like, yeah. The <laughs> They're doing coke Thomas- in the fucking dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas replied, his voice barely above a ris- whisper. It has always been blood and bone that elders speak of a chalice hidden beneath the roots of the oldest tree. It binds the offering to the land, to the very essence of the village. Convenient piece of lore, I scoffed. My cynicism. Cynicism, that's what it's called. Oh, okay. I'm so stupid. You got this. A A flimsy shield against the creeping dread. Mockery won't save us now, he shot back, his green eyes flashing with anger or something else, desperation. You wanted a plan, Lyle, this is it. Fine, I snapped, grabbing the le- the weathered satchel that lay discarded on the floor. Let's go appease some ancient vengeful spirits. The night wrapped around us like a shroud as we made our way through the village. Screams echoed in the distance, a haunting chorus of the cacophony of chaos. The watchers were close, their wrath palpable in the air, a scent like ozone before a storm. Stick close, Thomas muttered, eyeing the shifting shadows with distrust. We have one shot at this. Lead the way, I replied, my voice steady despite the tremor in his hand. As we entered the heart of the woods, the darkness grew oppressive and the trees looming like silent seniles. Every step felt like a wading through molass- molasses. The very ground resisting our passage. In the distance, an eerie glow beckoned, a beacon amidst the enroaching gloom. Is that the heartwood? Thomas confirmed, his gaze locked on the light and the oldest tree. We approached the luminescent tree. It's bark. Jesus Christ, how long is this? Oh, it's almost done. This is- <laughs> Did you pick the story? Yeah, but I don't read them. This is why you, pre- you, you pre-read them. I don't. You proofread them. I don't. Why not? Because I want to be surprised. Okay. It's like a little, like... You know, I get it, but then, like, you also gotta... No, that's, <laughs> that's just me, then, I guess. All right. We approached the luminescent tree. Its bark gnarled and twisted by time. I crouched, digging my fingers into the earth, feeling for the hidden chalice. My hands closed around a cold me- metallic object, and I pulled it free. A cup wrought from silver... Bained with a dark, unknown metal. Here, I said, handing it to Thomas. Do your part. I'll make the cut. Drawing my knife, I pressed the blade against my palm, welcoming the sting of steel-biting flesh. Blood welled up, dark and rich, dripping into the chalice held by, 
held trembling in Thomas's grasp. By blood and bone we beseech thee, Thomas's in intoned, his voice gaining strength with every word. Accept this offering, watchers of old, and be appeased. A howling wind rose, whipping through the trees, snatching the words from his lips. The chalice began to vibrate, the blood shimmering with uh, otherworldly light. Then silence, a pause in the world's breath before the plunge. The ground shuddered, and from the roots of the elder tree emerged ghostly apparitions, their forms flickering between this room and the next. Their eyes blazed with unholy fire, and I knew we had not quelled their anger, but stoked it. Run, I yelled, terror lending wings to my feet. But the forest had come alive with malevolent intent, branches reaching out like skeletal hands to ensnare us. Forgive us, Thomas cried out, his plea lost amid the roar of the watcher's fury. We were fools to think we could bargain with forces beyond our comprehension. As the watchers descended upon us, their ethereal forms coalescing into the into instruments of torment. I realized the truth of Meredith's warning. There was no return from this path. We had doomed ourselves in the village to fate, to a fate worse than death, a never-ending nightmare from where, from which there would be no awakening. Damn. Somebody put way to go disbeliever. <laughs> Shun the non-believer. Was that it? Shun. Yeah. Oh, shit. Not gonna lie, that was low-key kind of... It was okay. Yeah. I think the best one you've read so far was the one where the kids wanted to scare. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. really cool. Yeah, actually, that was pretty lengthy. It was like a pretty lengthy story. I know. It was low-key kind of boring. <laughs> was it? A little bit. That's why I... That's why I proofread them. <laughs> so I know it's interesting. You know. Should I read another one? Pretend I never read that one? Nah. We're sticking with it. Huh? We're sticking with it. Ugh, whatever. Yeah. Because then you're adding more editing on me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just restart it. <laughs> Let's just scrap the whole podcast entirely. <laughs> you know, we'll start from fresh. We'll call ourselves the, um... We'll call ourselves Cold Brews and Colder Murder Cases. I don't know. Cold Brews with cold... Cool dudes. Cold Brews and Colder Cases. I feel like I came up with that already. Yeah, you did. Right. So, you know... <laughs> we watched we started the show together and, and she finished it and she said we're gonna watch it together she finished it she finished it in under, in under a week I told you she then proceeded to watch the Big Bang Theory without me finished it in like three weeks I can't <laughs> like we can't like what the fuck like why promise me that we're gonna she watch fucking shows she caught up with Grey's Anatomy right she watched that shit four different times. Four to five, four to six. Grey's Anatomy is the white woman equivalent of One, one piece. piece. Yeah. Um, this is one of the Japanese urban legends, very famous over there. Oh, hell yeah. Called the 10 Day Dream. <gasps> and I'm getting it from quoteev.com. From what? <laughs> quoteev.com. Oh, quotev.com. Oh. So, you will dream for 10 days in succession. Hell yeah. Each dream comes with rules you must follow. Hell yeah. Warning. Oh. If you hear this story, you might end up experiencing these dreams within three days. Hell yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is future editor nubs. Please skip to 5155 if you wish to skip the upcoming story. Even though I know you don't believe it, some people are more spooked and more cautious in their... And what they hear. Womp womp. Yep. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I respect that, honestly. <laughs> they don't. You just said a womp womp. <laughs> no, I'm being, I'm being serious. I may not be religious or whatever, uh, but I mean, I am very respectful of other people's religions. It's not even about religion here. I know, but like people that are like, because people have fears and I believe fears are real. It's okay. Yeah. Like if you're deathly scared of something, why am I going to be a dick and then... Shove it in your face. Womp womp. <laughs> I'd say it as a joke, man. <laughs> I know. That's like me threatening Nicole with bugs, but I don't show her a bug. I just threaten her with bugs because it's funny. Hmm. But when I show her a bug, then that's fucked up. Yeah. Because I know she doesn't like bugs. All right. All right. <clears throat> First day. You will dream that you are sleeping in your room. Then you notice a girl peeping through the window. <gasps> 
First rule. I don't have windows in my room. First rule. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I gotta stop interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a fucking window. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do have a window, but I have blackout curtains, so nobody's gonna be peeping in here. Because you know I can't peep outside. I wanted blackout curtains, or I wanted, like, thicker shades than I have. But we never get them. Well, plus it's really hard to fit that window size. So it's Who kind cares? Of Just cover the whole thing. I know. Nobody's gonna notice. <sighs> Fucking my parents will. You know what? Actually, that got me on a, on a weird tangent like a couple of days ago, where I thought like I thought to myself, it's kind of weird to have a bathroom with like windows in it. I, I don't feel know like why. it's not weird to have a bathroom with windows in it. I don't. I don't know. I just find it weird. Like, I feel like it's cool for like. So that you, your bathroom doesn't get gross and like what mold no I get that but it's more like ventilation there we go I was gonna no, say inhalation no I, I, I was get, like wait a minute <laughs> I get that but it's also like if anyone has the power of will enough to just fucking go and look through that window like it just creeps me out well the window at least cause I don't have a window in my bathroom mm. which I don't like mm-hmm. but at my old uh, apartment we had windows but you couldn't see through them. They were mm. really, like, white. I don't know. If, I don't know. They were just very, like... You couldn't see through it at all. I mean, you can see, like, if it was sunny outside, you can see that there was light outside. But besides that, you couldn't. And then, plus, it was, like, tall enough where, like, nobody can actually see inside. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I would still always close it when I showered. And then I would open it when I was done showering. So that it can, like, ventilate or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I, I get it, but it's also... I guess it's just a weird part of me that just goes like, any moment, anyone could look through if yeah. they so desired enough. One thing that did creep me out, though, was that I did go to an Airbnb where they had a big-ass window. A really, really big window right next to the shower. You know, you know, like, the first rule of thumb is someone getting an Airbnb, Airbnb, right? What? Uh, Like, someone says to turn off all the lights and start recording, like, in the dark. If you can see, um... Red? Red? They have cameras. They have cameras, or, like, a type of light. Like, if you were to record, like, a, like a TV remote, you can see the the wavelengths, basically. Or the light emanating from the, the remote. Yeah. So you, you can see it. It's the same shit, the same principle that applies. Yeah. Yeah. First rule. You must let the girl in. Second From my day. window? Yeah. She's gonna climb through the window? You must let her in, yeah. You want to? What if I don't want to? It's part of the rules. Otherwise, it just repeats. She's going to be at my window every night? Mm-hmm. Until you let her in. Okay. You're going to keep dreaming the same dream until you let her in. Off topic, you know how I keep putting this on and I say that it's hot and then I take it off and then I get cold? Mm-hmm. I found out a solution. Literally, I feel perfectly fine with this now. A half and half bastard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I do under the blankets. I always have to stick my leg out. They just cover my whole body. Only they during the summer, I do, like, from the waist down. That's it. No, oh, the crazy thing that I do is that, like, when I put on a blanket, the whole upper body is covered, but my legs are not. Wow. I just kick them up. Which is weird. I feel like all of me needs to be covered. Like, at all times. But I guess. When it's, but when it's hot, that's just how I do it. I don't know. I'm weird. I guess I still have that fear from as a kid. Or, like, I just need to be all covered. I feel that. I, I feel that. Sucks. Alright. Second day. Second day. The girl is inside your room. She is looking downward on you. And cannot, but you can't see her face. Oh. Because of her long hair. Oh. She is muttering something. After a while, you realize what she's saying. Please. Please. Second rule. Let her come into the bed and lie down next to you. Third day. You and the girl are lying side by side. You are now able to see her, the girl's face. Her face is horribly burnt. Third rule. Do not cry out when you see her face. Fourth day. You get out of the bed. The girl says, let's go to the park. Fourth rule. Take the girl to the nearest park without saying a word. <laughs> Fifth day. When you arrive at the park, you will notice someone pushing a stroller. Look closely, and you will notice that the mother is a cat, and the baby is a dog. Fifth rule. You must kill either one of them. 
I don't know why that's that's a rule, but it's it's a thing apparently. Imagine committing murder and you're like, oh, it's just a game. <laughs> but it's so weird. Like it's such a weird fucking rule. <clears throat> Sixth day, while you're sleeping, oh, while you're playing with the girl in the park, you will see an airship about to take off. Sixth rule. What's an airship? Like an airplane? A mm-hmm. blimp? Mm-hmm. Airplane. But they just call it airship. That's stupid. I think, I think it's because... I'm sorry, that's what it's so rude. That's what it's so rude. I think it's because, like, this, this legend is probably really old. So I think back then it was more blimp? More blimps, blimp-ish than airplane? Airplanes have been around since, like... Well, I, I think, I guess they called it something else. They called it an airship. I don't know. I should, I should probably look up how old this thing is. All right, six rule. Make sure you get on the airship in time. Seventh day. The airship is full of people who, just like you, have heard this story. Seventh rule. Find a seat for yourself at any cost. Eighth day. After some time, red roses and black roses start raining down on you. Eighth rule. Throw out only the black roses from the airship. Ninth day. The airship takes off. Huh. The airship takes you back to the park. Ninth rule. Go home with the girl and lie down in the bed again. The tenth day. You will not know what happens on the tenth day unless you have observed all the rules from the previous days. You should also tell this story to someone while you are awake. Otherwise, you will go back to the first day of the dream. Bro, what the fuck? You, you have you to. Tell, you tell the person what happened, and you, then you have to experience all the days, and you have to follow all the rules. Otherwise, you have to start back from square one. Um. So it's like when the part of the airship when you find a seat for yourself. As long as you can find a seat, you continue the dream. If you don't, you start back from square one, and yeah. you keep going until you find your seat. I got that. Okay, but no one knows what happens on the tenth day. Because you have to experience it for yourself. Apparently it's different every time. For some people. That's lame. I want examples of what has happened. D- oh, Jesus. Um, I want to see. Oh, it's because I'm looking through these herbal legends and I got hit with the doll again. <laughs> Dude, I, you literally jumped. Oh, I never gave out the rules to the elevator game. Should I do that? Real quick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? So, for the people that don't remember... I forgot. <laughs> uh, the elevator game is an urban legend. It originated in Korea and Japan. It got popular after the death of Elisa Lam, who I'm going to cover next week for sure. Um, anyways, it was translated to English, so these are the rules, because I kind of covered the origin last week. Mm. The first requirement to play the elevator game is that you must play alone, and you must be in a building with at least 10 floors, and an elevator that can reach all 10 floors. It doesn't matter what time of day you start the game, as long as you are the only person on the elevator. You must start over if other people get on the elevator at any point, with one exception that is covered in the rules. Okay, board the elevator on the first floor and press the button to go to the fourth floor. When the elevator gets on the fourth floor, do not get off. Stay in the elevator and press the button to go to the second floor. When the elevator reaches the second floor, again, do not get off. Press the button to go to the sixth floor. At the sixth floor, stay in the elevator and press the button to go to the second floor. When you reach the second floor, stay on the elevator and press the button to go to the tenth floor. At this point, some people claim to have hear a voice calling out to them. It's important that you not answer or acknowledge the voice in any way. When the elevator reaches the 10th floor, stay on and press the button to go to the 5th floor. On the 5th floor, a woman may board the elevator. Some people say that she is a stranger. Others claim that she bears a resemblance to somebody in their past. Either way, do not acknowledge her in any way. Do not even look at her. The woman is not human. Some claim that if you acknowledge her, she'll take you straight to another world with no chance of escape. Press the button to go to the first floor. If the car descends to the first floor, the ritual has failed and you need to leave immediately. Do not look back or speak. Just exit the building and don't look back. 
However, if the elevator ascends, the ritual has succeeded and the car will rise to the 10th floor. This is your last chance to back out of the game. If you decide you don't want to continue, press the button for any floor besides the 1st or 10th floors to cancel the game. When you reach the 10th floor, you can choose to leave the elevator or stay on board. If you choose to exit, the woman who entered on the 5th floor may ask where you're going. If so, do not look at her or answer. Just exit the elevator. It's said that at this point you will find yourself in another world, sometimes called the other world, where electronics don't work and everything is dark, save for the bright red cross that may be reflected in the windows. Do not lose sight of the elevator you arrived in. It's the only thing that can take you back. If you didn't leave the elevator, you can press the button to go to the first floor, wait for the elevator to descend and get out as soon as it reaches the first floor. Then exit the building and return home without looking back or speaking at all. If you left the elevator, you must use the elevator you arrived in and repeat the ritual. Go to fourth floor, then floor two, floor six, floor two, floor ten, floor five, and then floor one. The elevator will begin to ascend to the tenth floor. You must begin you must press the button for another floor to stop it before you pass the ninth floor. Then descend to the first floor. When you reach the first floor, do not exit until you check your surroundings. Carefully, if even the smallest detail seems off, you must stay in the elevator and repeat the ritual again until you are confident you have safely returned to your own world. Once you are sure you are safe, you may exit the elevator and return home without talking or looking back at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be really hard to try that in the States. The States? In the States. There's There's so many fucking people. There's a lot of people. Yeah. (laughs) Like, first off, you have to have a place that has more than 10 floors, or at least 10 floors. Like, if you're going in an elevator, there's at least one person getting on. Yeah. Like, at all fucking times. Yeah. So, unless you're, like, going to fucking buttfuck nowhere, Ohio, like, or there's, like, no one there or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, good luck. I feel like Ryan and Shane should try that. That'd be interesting to see. But it'd be... Well, I mean, it's not like you can even see it because one of the rules, I I believe, You can't bring anything with you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right here, it didn't say, but in another post that I've read in another website, it said that you can't bring electronics and that electronics don't work in the other world. But... Most of of those rules don't say, like... It says to just stay on the elevator, huh? Huh? So it just has to stay on the elevator, huh? Yeah, basically. But, like, for example... Um, like the other world, what I've seen, I read once that the, that basically like when you step out, you just see like a big red cross. Yeah. Like a neon red cross. And I'm like, hmm, this is giving American Horror Story apocalypse, but I dig it. God, they fumbled that season so bad. Huh? They fumbled that season so bad. Yeah. Such a shame. It was good. The first three were good. Which was Murder House, Coven, I really and, like... uh, no, was it, no, it was Murder House, Asylum, Coven, mm-hmm. Freak Show. Mm-hmm. Those four were good. I love the whole, uh, Murder Hotel, that one was really good. The hotel one? Yeah. Oh, hotel one was really good too. That one was, I, that one was my favorite out of all of them. Yeah. Asylum, second, uh, first season, third. You know what, I actually agree with you. Really? I agree with you. Yeah. Freak Show was okay. I never watched Freak Show on that one. Mm. No. Mm-hmm. But I remember when the episodes were coming out, like, I just... I didn't watch that season at all. Yeah. But it's cool. Yeah. Well, um, in Asylum, there's there was one patient. Her name is Pepper. Yeah. She, she's, in, she's in Freak Show. Yeah. The one thing that that, <clears throat> did, that did piss me off about Asylum was that... They, like, added aliens. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> Fucking spoilers, by the way. Uh, they added I aliens. I mean, this dude, this show's old as hell. Yeah, I know, but then there's like, people who'll be like, hey, man, what the fuck? Who's gonna watch that fucking next week? But, wow. like... You're gonna forget. <laughs> but people... Like, yeah, it, it was like, they just added aliens, like, really late into, like, the season. Like, the, almost, like, the last, what, like, three episodes? Yeah. And it, it just comes out of nowhere, and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Help! He's escaping! Hey, the, the, killer, the killer is escaping! 
there was there's this, Help me. This Sarah old, Paulson, I yeah, fucking love her. This is old TikTok where someone's doing that. But they're like dancing to it, like help! I the prisoners that. escaping. <laughs> they're like dancing to that. I love how you're dancing while you're saying that. Because <laughs> there's only one way to do and it. That one too, like do me I'm like hell yeah. All That's right. my jam. Uh, should we wrap it up there? Or do you want me to cover like one more Japanese urban legend? One more Japanese. I like listening to it. Okay. Good luck with the editing. <sighs> But yeah, that's a lot of shit. You know what? I think I need a grippy sock vacation. You need a what? A grippy sock vacation. Grippy sock vacation? Yeah. You should ask Marky about that. He said it's fucking sucked. The only thing that sucks is that when you go to sleep at night, they wake you up like every hour, every 30 minutes, to make sure you're still alive. Well, duh. And I'm like, let me get my beauty rest. You've seen the videos of TikTok of like girls going to like you know those places and then be like I forgot people here are actually mentally unwell and not and not a fucking vacation for yeah. some of us yeah they're like yeah no shit like people have it fucking terribly yeah and they're just going there to just like believe me I have dealt with psych patients I know how bad it is yeah and I don't know I guess it just like irritates it irritates me a little bit like like yeah like you're there for a reason people are absolutely there. I mean like if you ha- if you're having like troubles with suicide and you're there for a read like you're there to be put on watch like i get it sure but then it's just like it's not a vacation either yeah i don't know well i mean well, at least i mean it's cool to joke about it but like no it, it's on, it, like you know? if if you've been through it you know you absolutely can joke about it like margie's joked about it a couple times yeah <laughs> uh this is gonna sound fucking this is gonna further nicole's obsession with me and Marky. um Right before he went in to the to this little rehab uh, vacation, <laughs> I had lent him a, a shirt. Uh, fuck, I've never gotten it back. But um, he said that that's what kind of kept him calm that entire time. Because like he just had it on him almost like the entire time. Mm. He's like, I would just like my best. He's like my best friend. He's like, shirt. he's like, I would feel it. I was like. Just like wrap it around me every now and then, just to kind of keep myself calm. That's sweet. Mm. That's a good friend. You guys are really good friends. It makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you heard of Kashima Raiko? They say that after you hear the story of Kashima Raiko, she will appear to you within a month. Hell yeah. Some say within three days. Come, come to me, mommy. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to see her, don't read this. Hi everybody, feature editor Nubs here. If you wish to avoid the story, please go to one hour and six minutes. I'm listening, so who knows? Um, but the story also goes by Teki Teki. Tiki Tiki? Half body lady. Uh Kashima Reiko is the ghost of a woman who lived in the city of Hokkaido, Japan. One night she was attacked by a group of men. <gasps> they beat her badly, abused her horribly, and then mm-hmm. left her for dead. Aww. She tried to call out for help, but nobody heard her. She tried to find someone to help her, so she crawled onto a railway track and collapsed, unconscious. The train came along and ran her over, killing her and cutting her in two. Her body was sev- was severed at the waist. Ever since then, Kashima Reiko's vengeful ghost has wandered the world, searching for her missing legs. She is mainly encountered in school bathrooms, but... Oh, but may also appear in your bathroom at home in the middle of the night the when you enter at work <laughs> <laughs> at night can you imagine if you just go to work and this fucking half body lady just waiting for you there i've been expecting you arrive <laughs> <laughs> my god is good <laughs> what oh <laughs> uh, i'm not going to finish that <laughs> um Okay, also, hold up. If you're looking for half of your legs, go to the fucking cemetery. Am I wrong? You're gonna sit here and tell me that I'm wrong? I don't think she was buried. <laughs> We're just looking at each other like... <laughs> fucking moving like a snake. <laughs> no, it reminds me of that. You know, the, the dog with the really long ears and it's curly, and then it just looks at each other like like that? Mm-hmm. I'm a, when, I, when I see a post with all the dogs, I'll, I'll show you which one. Okay. Okay, when you enter the bathroom, she will ask you a questions. If you cannot answer her questions correctly, 
she will tear off your legs. If you know she what? asks... Huh? Sorry, I'm so sorry. I did oh. not mean to interrupt you. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry. It's fine. What were you saying? Imagine sitting in the stall trying to take a really big shit <laughs> and then some bitch crawls under your fucking stall. <laughs> I'd be pissed. Let dude. me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, if you want my legs, let me, like, here, take this shit then. <laughs> Although, I guess if she cuts you from the waist down or takes, like, your legs entirely She back, can deal with the shit. No, yeah, well, she's going to empty you out regardless. Like, Hell yeah. It's going to all just go in one succession at that point. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing this both of you. Quickest way to lose weight. You're going to just poop on her. Like, yeah. fuck it, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. If she asks, where are my legs? The answer is. I ate them. The answer is, on the Main Chain Expressway. She will say, "Who told you that?" You have to reply with, "Kashima Reiko told me that." Sometimes she asks a trick question. Do you know my name? Do not say, "Kashima," or she will kill you. <gasps> the Why? correct answer is, "Mask Death Demon," because that is what Kashima translates to. Oh, I think that. Is pretty much it, because then it just repeats on here. What the fuck is this? Is that a picture of her? Yeah, actually. Hell yeah. Let's see. Can you screenshot it and send it to me? Yeah. And then if you have a picture of the other one that you read? Pretty much it. I mean, I still need to send you the video of the guys who did, like, like the top 40 urban legends of, J- of Japan. Like, it's I have a book. Great. I know you have a book, but it's, it, like... They're... Do you want to borrow it? No, eventually. But I'm telling you, like, these guys narrated great... Yeah. Like it's creepy, it's beautiful. Plus yeah. it's it's um the YouTuber Blame It on Jorge. Mm. Great con- great dude on YouTube. Send it to me, dude. I will. I will. I'll probably send it to you like after we finish recording. Cool beans. Yeah. But that's gonna cover it for this creepy caffeinated chronicles. Because I know you wanna take a nap afterwards. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Anything else you wanna uh closing ha- statements? Happy St. Patty's Day, man. <laughs> um I listened to the audiobook of Jeanette's, Jeanette McCurdy's uh, book. I, I, I don't know what y'all do. <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day. I don't know what y'all do. <laughs> put the clover. They drink. That's pretty much it. I guess it's just a day to, to, to warrant drinking, I guess. <laughs> He's probably going to go to work tonight and be like, do you know what this bitch told me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dude, her book was so sad. I know, right? Like but I, she narrated it so beautifully. I just couldn't. I was like, "Wow!" Like, the signs are really obvious, but I guess as a kid, you're looking up to your parents as the role model and the exemption of the world, and that's how she saw it. But it's sad that it took her so long and through so many changes in life to realize that her mother was abusing her, basically. And she and she still doesn't hate her. No, I think she does. No, in the book, I don't think she said she hated her. Well, like in the interview, she said, like, I don't hate my mom. I'm glad that she's dead, but I don't hate her. Hmm. I'm glad I just misremembered them. Oh, no, because I'm just remembering her hating Ariana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and then... That was fucked up. <laughs> going back to American Horror Story, Evan Peters, mm-hmm. fine as wine, right? Why is this? Why is he in Ariana Grande's new music video? She cannot have him. What? Yeah. You're bullshitting. I am not bullshitting. I am not bullshitting. I haven't seen the music video. I haven't seen the music video, but one of my friends is a an Arianator. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> what? The fucking. It's because Marky sent me a, a video from YouTube where it's like this VA going like, like robot. Crease his Jordans, right? Mm-hmm. And the girl who does that voice over, mm-hmm. uh, she comments a lot on my TikTok series because mm-hmm. it's her. Like, I'm tagging her, and she's like, she's really cool about it. Yeah. And fucking work, he's like, this is the fourth coolest thing you've ever done. <laughs> like, what the fuck are the other ones? What one? the fuck? <laughs> what are the other ones? That's what I want to know. <laughs> the. If I don't see him oiled up on my bed, tied up on my birthday, I will be pissed. What was it? The Jeffrey Dahmer series took a lot out of him. Yeah. Which I don't blame him for that. He probably got a lot of hate for it, too. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I, Even uh, though I love Evan Peters, I personally will not watch it. I know. It, people do romanticize 
they even showed that too to the Drake during the show, where in one of the segments, no, in one of the episodes, while he's in prison, like he's receiving uh, fan mail from girls, uh, showing how much they love at the time, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, how he's inspiring to them, and they'll send like photos of themselves to him, letters, money, even, and. When I was watching that, I was like, yeah. Same like, with Richard Ramirez. He got married because of a fan. Yeah, I was like, I guess no matter what year, like it, there will always be people who romanticize killers. There was this, uh, on Etsy. <clears throat> Etsy? On Etsy, there was this thing where it was all like, uh, I think this is like, choke me like Dahmer. Oh, no. Something like, like, uh, what's that other thing? Something like Bundy, or and then chuck me like Dahmer. I forgot Bundy's method of killing, but they did that. And then there was this one girl. They had earrings of the serial killers too. Mm -hmm. And then there was this one girl that has a whole arm sleeve and leg sleeve, I think, of just serial killers, real life serial killers. And like I understand that you like fake serial killers, like Ghostface, even though they're inspired by real killers, but that character itself is fictional. Yeah, but it's still kind of a gray line. Yeah. Because some people still will really romanticize. Like, some of the decals that we saw today, like, yeah, they'll fucking, like, gender bent it with, like, some anime characters yeah. covered in blood. But, like, I, you realize that you're st still sort of glorifying a killer in a real way. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. let, let me reiterate by saying, like, yes, it's okay to like some characters. Like, they are fictional. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's okay to like the series of, a, of Scream or... Uh, Freddy Cooker or Child's Play. It's cool. It's fine. But, you know, at the same time, <laughs> they're fucking killers. Like, mm -hmm. like, you can't just make that same excuse. Like, just because they are fictional doesn't mean that they've done a lot of wrong shit. Mm -hmm. Am I crazy for saying that? or Especially for Cougar, because he's a... He's a, a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah. 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 It's really I wonder bad. if Pyramid Head was inspired by anybody. I doubt it. Stay safe, y'all. No, not sh No, wasn't he, like, the the embodiment of something? I think he's... Does he represent God in the movie, in the games? No. I'm, no, he's supposed I'm to be... I'm hella confused. He's supposed to represent guilt and inner torment. Hell yeah. Yeah. Manifesting from that part of his mind, uh, like, the, the main character that you play in the games... That's what it's supposed to represent. Like, the, the player's guilt and inner torment. That's why I love him. Described as distorted memory of the executioners. Hell yeah. Oh, speaking of, you know how, like, romanticizing, you know, killers, making fictional characters out of real characters? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I told you already, but there's this dating sim game that I used to play on, on mobile called Ikemen Vampire. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, yeah we, yeah. we I think we talked about it in one of the creepy yeah. Captain the Chronicles, yeah. And then I think was it, I think his name was Charles. And then out of curiosity, because every single character is based off of somebody in real life. Hmm. And then they decided to add like the first arc finished, right? And then the second arc is coming. And when the second arc came, they added three more characters. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I'm literally looking them up, and then one of them is literally an executioner. First of all, I was all like, whoa, 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 because they added Napoleon Bonaparte. And you already know how he was, you know? Like, Isaac Newton, I get it, you know? Uh, da Vinci, I get it. Mm -hmm. Like, hell yeah, romanticize them, but Napoleon Bonaparte. And they didn't make him short. Well, it's, <laughs> it's and so, it, like I just said earlier, like, it's unfortunate, but I guess yeah. no matter what time period, people will always romanticize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somebody like that, I guess. Yeah. No matter what people romanticize. There was a whole... Jack the Killer. Jack the Killer. Um, even some of the... The Black Dahlia people. Oh my gosh. When I went to Frankincense, there was... There's a certain stall that's kind of like in the... Like at the front, but it's like in the middle. And they have all of the art. I, I'm... No, I know, I know exactly. Time. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I can't believe I recognized the art. And I think I was with you guys and I was like, that's the Black Dahlia. That's the autopsy photo. Of the Black Dahlia. The photo that... The t not the autopsy. The crime scene photo. Hmm. Of the Black Dahlia. They drew art from that. And I think that was highly disrespectful. Yeah, it, some people just... They don't see the boundary, unfortunately. Yeah. It it's really sucks. 
Yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah. What was I gonna say? Jeff the Killer. Even some creepy pastas too. People were romanticizing the shit out of that Slenderman, even which caused a murder, which almost caused a murder. Thirteen year old me is like <laughs> crying right now. You were obsessed with Jeff, with Jeff the Killer. Yes. Oh, I was mainly a Ben John girly and a Dark Link girly. I had I had a really big Legend of Zelda phase, hmm. but Jeff the Killer sometimes was there too, and then Slenderman. Eyeless Jack, he ate kidneys. So. Well, Nicole's gonna cosplay Jeff the Killer, and I'm gonna mm. cosplay Eyeless Jack for Halloween. So. You know there's a bounty on finding one of the original Jeff the Killer pictures? Wow. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's been distorted and photoshopped so much over the years, like over the 20 plus years it's been around. No one knows the true original source of the picture. Mm-hmm. So I think there's like a twenty thousand dollar bounty on it. Wow! I think I don't remember the exact amount. Blame it on Jorge, the one I'm telling you about, the Japanese urban legend. Mm-hmm. He covers the the uh, the topic. Hmm. So it's interesting because he'll also go through the depths of like uh, lost media, recovered lost media. Like um, he just uh, he was obsessed with a Sesame Street episode that was released back into the public. Not that long ago. So it was pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of cool shit. That's crazy. Hmm. I'm down to watch a video right now, too, of that guy. It's up to you. But, uh, if nothing else, any closing statements for you? Um... Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. Uh, wash it every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know damn well I'm right. <laughs> have your cat spayed or neutered it does not matter um take your vitamins your supplements drink water eat i know some of y'all are conspiring with the skittle squad y'all are fruits (laughs) i know what you are (laughs) um what's it called i'm really excited to cover elisa lamb me too i really really am excited to cover it not like in a morbid excited but you know what i mean we know yeah i mean yeah well the thing is is that it's just so interesting that's the part that i'm yeah. excited of just the whole research not the mystery oh my, i'm like yeah i'm not like oh my gosh she died Woo-hoo. no well, like we said i think a couple a couple of times already on on the show where we don't try to glorify and make uh what's the word i'm looking for we just don't try to glor- glorify a lot of these cases. Yeah. My Mo- co- most of the time, it's just the mystery behind yeah. a lot of these cases that, that just intrigues us. My coworker did admit, he's all like, you guys are definitely tap dancing on the line between crossing it. Are we? That's what he says. He's like, that's what I think. But it's still entertaining. And you guys aren't disrespectful. When it comes, I think what he might be referring to is that when we talk about serial killers, and then like we talked about them being executed, you for sure throw a couple of like haha, like womp womp, fuck you, because at, they at, deserve at the to die. And I think that's the part that he's probably talking about tiptoeing. Mm, mm-hmm. Maybe who knows? Maybe. I should ask him. I should yeah. ask him next shift I see him. Yeah, but you know, once again, but yeah. we just he basically... want to be respectful. Yeah, obviously, but. And if it doesn't sometimes come out that way, we're sorry. We're, we're, we're sorry. But until then, this is these are your favorite hosts. Plural. Plural. Mr. Butternubs and Ray. Yeah. Signing out. Uh, if you guys are on Spotify, leave a rating. Take a part of the polls. If you're on YouTube, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Ooh. Share the podcast with whoever you think is going to enjoy it. Uh, we'll see you guys on episode 21 of the Caffeinated Creeps podcast, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Woo-woo! Bye-bye.